Hello and welcome back again to another Try Hack Me Room. This one is called Web Application Security. It is brand new here on Try Hack Me. I think we have, let's see, 51 days old, only 2,820 users are in the room. So that is fairly new. <clears throat> I took the liberty to already start the room. And it's a short room, and there are no live servers in, involved in this, so I think it's more or less something we need to read and understand, learn about web applications, and explore some of their common security issues. I think this is still a thing that many programmers should pay more attention to. Um, I'm, mainly, I'm mainly arguing uh, that the shorter uh, time based computer science educations that fabricate a lot of you know programmers they do not know how to work with security and that is a general issue so I'm trying to find some solution for that. It is highly difficult to create a solution and have the whole world not search for my channel so please share it's my Hope for you guys to help share the security issue that is around the globe for many young programmers and developers and I just think they just need more education, you know, because it is a high responsibility to go out and develop software. I kind of want to compare it to that you can educate yourself as a car manufacturer in two years and then you can create a car. It's not enough time to understand how to do a car. Maybe you can get it rolling, but it might fall, you know, fall, you know, I don't know, just uh, destroy itself by starting the motor or something like that. So yeah, so this is what I, my plea to you guys. So the introduction here is, um, I kind of tell you that everyone uses different programs from computers, you know, speaking programs, run our computers, making our computers processing power, and so on and so on. And what we're going to read here is that an application has a program, you need to install it. Many programs run in the browser these days, mentioning some browsers here, mentioning different kind of, you know, software we're using, webmails and Office 365, Google Drive, Soho Office, you know, online shopping on different kind of, you know, Amazon, AliExpress, Etsy and so on. And there are many things things you do online now. You have online banking, money transfer, with the forecast, social media. All those uh, represent some sort of, um, I wouldn't say threat, but if you're <laughs> working there, there are threats against the media you're using. So basically, this is just a page, uh, online page, and it talks about that the idea of a replication is that the program is running on a remote server, and a server refers to computer running <coughs> to continuously serve that service to you on the website as the interface. So that interface has a direct connection to the web server, making it vulnerable to attacks because it is the most representative, you know, GUI or graphic user interface that is exposed for the whole world, which is usually what I say port 443. In the old days was port port 80 but that is basically what it is so you can see here that they made a small drawing that the way it happens is that you on your computer as a step one is doing some sort of search this particular case is an item search for something let's just assume that it's uh, some online shopping replication then it's gonna hit the um, it's gonna direct the, the request to a database the products get the results back and return to us with a result page containing the search data. Now imagine that the things we are sending here on step number one could contain malicious stuff because we cannot stop the user because the user is not in our control. Anyone can send anything from their browser to the server, which is the one here. So it is up for the server, which is also called the backend to filter, you know, I was to verify or um, sanitize the input to the server so we don't have stuff like, you know, 
cross scripting and SQL injection and other various things that could be kind of harmful to the server. So <clears throat> from a user's perspective, you know, you will only see the web page. You will not notice all this. It will be like this fast and you will just, yeah, 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 you know. And this is what, you know, the bosses uh, really do not understand. We have a question here down below. What do you need to access a web application? I guess they want me to write browser, I guess. Yeah. So this is what you need to access a web application. What they try to show you with this small image here is this is the internet browser you're using. On this next, next task, they do talk about web application security risks. And there are stuff like, you know, it says, let's say you want to buy an item and there are a step-by-step -step straightforwardly uh, five steps you need to follow, which is like you log into the app, the web page, search for product, add the product to shopping cart, specify the shipping address, provide payment details. Now, any of these steps here could be compromised in some way. And of course, you're probably watching this video because you're new to security. So I'm not gonna go into detail, but eventually when you get uh, further in security, you know, you will learn a lot more. I know they, they did give some information about the attack and try and discover a password or the attack and attempt to breach the system. So if you read the text here, you can get an idea of what kind of, you know, specific, uh, uh, ways a hacker can misuse a type of functionality and there are many different ways these here is only mentions they mention a few it's not a a complete list so they do talk about identification and authentication failure now <clears throat> uh, identification refers to the ability to, to identify a user uniquely uh, in contrast authentication refers to the ability to prove that the user is who they claim to be. And that can probably cause some confusion, I guess. Uh, the text here says the online shop must confirm the user's identity to authenticate them before they can use the system. However, the step is prone to different uh, types of weaknesses, example weaknesses below. So it says allowing the attacker to use brute force. That is like trying many different passwords in combination with some sort of username eventually you might hit you know it's assumed this is the database containing three users with three, three different passwords eventually you will try Anna with the password freedom one which is basically gonna let that person in so of course you can create countermeasures you know implement some controls uh, write some better code you know that is a really good idea to actually mitigate the way out of a brute force attack so that is uh, one way to do it. Broken access control is a different thing. It's um, access control ensure that the user can only access the files document related to the role or work. Uh, sometimes you can access a particular page um, without logging in, which is then called broken access control. Now assume that you can access, let me just give you some, some idea. Uh, a friend's Facebook configuration page, and you can see your friend's configuration page with some sensitive information. Now that is broken access control, and basically it means that the system is not verifying the access of the user, so the it's the user's authentication is not there. So um, that is called broken access control. Basically, they go hand in hand. The three: identification, authentication, and broken access control. All right, so injection is another part you need to be aware of in web application security. It's where you can, um, when you give some, uh, would you, let me just scroll a bit here to the image. Assume uh, a web page like this. So you have uh, different kind of search parameters and you have a shopping cart. You can maybe give some input th through a, a text field. Now, when you press the button, submit or send or save or update or go, or whatever they call the, the button, the button's name is not important at all. It's just the name they give it. That's That data is being sent to the server. And the server is then interpreting that data and processing it in some way. That is what it does with the data. All right, so 
if you if you didn't take care of the data and didn't validate it, or you didn't um, validate verify it, usually called validate, or didn't um, sanitize it, well, maybe then it could be used for some malicious use, and you can make the server react in an unintentional way, which is what injection is all about. Cryptographic failures is, um, for example, if you're using the wrong um, encryption model for your uh, passwords to be saved on the server, it's very typical for web applications that it is the password that is basically only the thing you do um, save in a, in a in a in an encrypted form in your database. Uh, that that it, it holds a different name when you you know, save passwords in an encrypted form, it's called hashing. But I want to keep this a bit more simple because this is a beginner's room and I, I kind of think that the that you watch my video should probably be in the beginning of security. So, so but there's a difference bit between like encryption and hashing and, and basically I'm not going to go into that, but but if you take a note and you further explore and, 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 and expand your, your mindset and understanding of the two concepts, you will uh, definitely uh, get uh, further with that. So, the question says, we discovered that the login page allows unlimited number of login attempts without trying to slow down the user's login account. What is the category of this uh, risk? So, we have some different words here. And the category of this risk is called identification and authentication failure. Now, I'm just gonna put it in and <clears throat> then you're gonna discuss it. Well, when you have a web page that allows unlimited amount of login attempts, what it says right here, so you can log in as many times as you wish, and no matter how many times you try to log in, there's gonna be no blockage, or you will not be, the, it, 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 the, the server is not gonna make you wait longer per attempt, it's just gonna continue with the same speed. That is some sort of authentication, uh, identif identification failure, because it is in within that category. You're trying to authenticate yourself. That is what brute force is all about. You're trying to, to log in, and a login attempt is an authentication and identification failure. Okay, you notice that the username and password are sent in clear text without encryption. What is the category of this security risk? So we're gonna scroll up here and say, this is called cryptographic failure and basically put it in. So if you do not in some way save your password in, in a encrypted form your database, that is of course a direct failure. But there are many other types of failures by for example using a weak and outdated or deprecated or found to be proven vulnerable, you know, algorithm to uh, hash or encrypt your passwords. That is also cryptographic failure. So we're gonna take on the last one here. It's called practical example. And there's something called view page here. And what we're gonna find here in the actual last question is, check the other users to discover which account was used to make the malicious changes and revert them. After reverting the changes, what is the flag that you received? Now, if you're new to track me rooms or what is this flag, you know, uh, I don't know what the hint says, um, yeah. Um, a flag is a unique series of letters and numbers uh, or special characters that you have a special format. In this particular case, it's probably the same as they always use. TMH for try hack me, then two curly brackets and some, you know, not easily refabricated uh, set of characters in the middle to prove that you found the right answer. So a flag is basically just a proof that you did the task correct. Now, without reading all this, and uh, so I, I, you should do it before you do it, but it basically talks about you can, you can edit whatever, you know, input parameter in the URL here. And you, you should of course know what a URL is before you do security. So I'm really just gonna click the view page here. And it kind of just tells us to check the other users to discover which user account was used to make the malicious changes after, and revert them after reverting changes for the flag. So you should definitely just 
have a look at this. It's a small web page. We can click on things. So we click here. We see, you know, stuff. We, we basically just try and click on things, see what happens. Inventory doesn't show anything. Your activity. And this is the only page in the web application that kind of allows us to change something. We are the user of 11 of this employee ID. We are employee number 11. Our name is Roddy and we are in a warehouse supervisor. So we basically just try and say, what if I do something like one? We could do that. Then we have another user here. It's called larger. It's a president. And we can try to access other IDs like number two or number three and see what it does. Uh, we have no idea what to, what to do. So user number four is not present. User number five is not present. Number six, seven is a front desk um, Madrid, or how to say it. Number eight is a database admin. Let's see if we can find something interesting. Number nine. All right, so we found number nine. And it seems that there is something here we can do. Uh, so let's try and just look further at 10, 11, which is us, and then 12, 13. So it seems that we are basically the, the last user. Now what we're doing right here is, I would probably say that because we are warehouse supervisor, we shouldn't have access to the other accounts there is. So I would say that it is was Elia that that's responsible for this particular uh, what's called malicious changes, whatever they're called, because we can change the actual ID of the user on the top of the URL, which is uh, allowing us to see um, other users' uh, personal information, which is actually the same as broken access controls. Now we can access other users' data which shouldn't really be allowed, but depending on the system and how it's you know, programmed, we should be allowed. But depending on that, so I'm just try to revert all of them. And from that, we do get this flag here, which I can copy, put it in and basically complete this room here on TriHackMe. Now, if you're new to security and, and these kind of rooms here, it might seem a bit, weird that you can just you know click on something and get something like a flag or something but the whole idea of the key exercise of this i would say is to understand the different vulnerabilities that a web application can have to know the different steps to look for different steps to uh, be aware of when you do programming if you're a programmer if you are a a supervisor or whatever role you have you know you should be able to, to, to go in and talk with the programmer or be the programmer, of course, and know how and where to fix the code. This is not a room that, that you know, tells you how, you know, teaches you how to, to, to fix the code, but it's kind of more, more like a, a awareness room. So I hope you liked the video and hope to see you again and have a nice day.